High five, waking life, Izzy's. For a small town in southern Appalachia, the amount of good coffee is astounding. But how did they get here? What's their future like? And how the hell does a nationwide perversion with mediocre and usually burnt grande latte has not put them out of business? I spoke to some of the people behind the Asheville coffee shops to find out. I think counterculture has helped a lot. I worked at the Drippolator in 2006. They used uh, Larry's Beans. When Jay bought it, he transitioned to counterculture. It's always been counterculture. Mm -hmm. Every coffee shop in town, for the most part, uses counterculture. Counterculture is a roaster out of Durham, North Carolina. It uses raw beans from around the world through direct trade and sells their roasted beans to both businesses and consumers. Along with Stumptown out of Portland, Oregon, and Intelligentsia out of Chicago, it is considered one of the big three of the third wave coffee movement. This movement pushes toward a general perception of coffee as artisanal, rather than just, say, something freeze-dried you use to get up in the morning. Refreshing hot coffee makes any time a pleasant interlude. Both High Five and Izzy's use counterculture, while Waking Life uses mountain air roasting out of Asheville. Knowledge about coffee, what's being done with crafting coffee, it's changing. But there are definitely people that are really trying to push the quality of the coffee. And customer service too, man, like that's such a hard thing. The point is trying to get to what they want. I'll make anybody any drink that they want. I have no qualms with that. There's a lot of coffee shops where the baristas have the suspenders and the bow ties and the mustaches and they're mean to you. I'm not gonna pretend that I'm some, you know, like French hipster. The point is, is, is the drink, you know. So the coffee here has gotten better and the baristas have become nicer. Where will Asheville's coffee scene go from here? to see if any of the big boys of coffee will try to help it up here. Stumptown just got a massive venture capital infusion. I don't think Asheville's quite on the radar yet for a lot of those places, but I think that we might get there. There's a constant sort of growth process. I think once that happens, you will kind of see the standard of coffee go up. I see Asheville's coffee scene getting bigger, getting more refined, diverging in some ways. Less places you come in and say, hey, this is a great town, let's open up coffee shops. Hopefully it will be less and less likely to, to sustain themselves. And as far as Starbucks is concerned? We get a little bit of crossover. You know, we do we just say, hey, this is, this is what we do. This is what you're looking for. Well, let's see what we can do. Let's make this one. They've taken some of the traditional Italian names. Macchiato, for example. Two shots of espresso and a little bit of texturized milk. Starbucks took the name Macchiato and turned it into a caramel chocolate monstrosity. If somebody asks what a traditional macchiato is, I explain it and then they say, okay, that's not what I want. I want the one that, that I get, usually get at Starbucks. So that's, and that's fun. I'm not gonna knock them making our, you know, the fact that my career is now economically feasible. Honestly, they made it okay for people to pay four bucks for a cup of coffee. And for these other two places as well, hopefully for many more years to come. Sensation takes hold. Then